Today we're going to be talking about my weight slash health goals for 2017. And no, they're not going to be the typical lose 25 pounds and exercise more. This year, my goals are going to be realistic, achievable, and trackable. So stick around as I quickly walk you through my goals for 2017. y'all, I'm Wendy Valencia, and if you're new to my channel, here's a few of the videos that you can get from this channel. As you can see, weight is just one of the topics I cover on this channel, and my channel is basically about doing hard things with a positive attitude and a sense of humor. And when I say hard things, it's like getting out of debt, losing weight, all of those things. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, make sure you click the subscribe button down below and then go on over right next to it and click that little alert bell so that you don't miss a single thing that I upload. So let's get into it. So in my video titled 2016 Financial Wins and Fails, I talked about our financial wins and fails, obviously, for 2016, but just the amount of time that we've been following the Dave Ramsey plan, not for the whole year. And if you don't know about Dave Ramsey, I am going to link this amazing video down below done by Angie about the seven baby steps from Dave Ramsey. You have to check it out. It is a fantastic video. So when I posted this video, I got a comment from Mar Martinez House, Martin House, Mar Martin House, Mar Martin Us House, Martinus House. Let's go with Martinus House. Sorry, I know I butchered your last name. You would think it's a pretty simple last name, but yeah, no, I'm no good with figuring out what things sound like. And they said, you need to add a tally mark in with the 100 mile challenge. And that got me thinking, oh, I should do a wins and fails video for my health goals for 2016. What a great idea. I quickly realized I couldn't do a wins and fails video because well, I hadn't set any goals for 2016 and I hadn't tracked any goals for 2016. So how can I do a wins and fails video if um, I had no goals and I don't know whether I achieved anything I wanted to reach? I know that I maintained the same weight, so I guess that's a win, ding. But other than that, I can't tell you. I do know that I basically gained and lost the same two pounds every other week for the whole entire year because apparently that's just my body. Up to, down to, up to, down to. And I tracked my food really well in spurts. Like I would go for three weeks and track everything I wrote and then not track for like a month and a half. But I think the real problem for everything was that I didn't set any goals. So I realized pretty quickly, if I'm gonna be successful this year, I'm gonna have to set some goals. It's kind of logical, isn't it? So my weight goals for 2017 are kind of lofty, but at the same time, not. They're kind of an ever evolving process. The uh, wins and losses are gonna be notable over time, but not really as a one by one sort of thing, because it really is all about improving on my last choice. I'm not gonna set goals like lose 20 pounds because uh, honestly, while I do need to lose at least 20 pounds, I don't know that having a goal like that is actually help healthy for me mentally. It's just too much pressure and I don't know that it really helps me make any of the long-term changes that I really need to make. So what are my actual goals going to be? Goal number one, this is a big one. Find out what foods I love that love me back. So the first step in this process is actually one that I already knew I was gonna have to do and that's tracking everything I eat. But tracking is gonna be a little bit different this time. I'm not gonna track you know, exactly how many calories I took in. I'm gonna track what I ate and how it made me feel. And track certain things like Am I tired or am I energized or am I hungry two hours later? And I actually started doing this back in November and right around the holidays I stopped because I got so busy, but I learned a ton in just a few weeks. I've, I've had food intolerances for as long as I can remember. Avocado is one of those foods that does not love me at all. It hates me, in fact, it's, it's evil. And I had an incident with peanut butter a couple of weeks ago that, that had me running for the allergist. So obviously this is one of those goals that I'm never gonna be perfect at. And that's actually good for me because that means it's okay if I mess up, which I'm, 
I have historically been an all or nothing person and I kind of need to get away from that. So I think this as a goal will help me make better choices in the long run because honestly, when I eat foods that make me feel horrible, I tend to stay away from them. But I've been kind of oblivious for a really long time about how foods react to me. And um, so I think this will do me some, some good. So goal number two is going to be figuring out a way to deal with my evening eating. From the time I walk in the door after work until pretty much when I go to bed, I'm doing this. Not the whole time, like I go in spurts, but the more tired I get, the more I eat. And I haven't really ever come up with a way to deal with that. And it's about time I did. I mean, it's something I'm completely capable of controlling. I just need to come up with some tactics for how I'm gonna deal with it. So I think that's a totally achievable goal. And again, not something I'm gonna be perfect at. And that's okay. It's just about being better than I was before. Goal number three, I'm gonna figure out a way to deal with convenience eating. This one's huge for me and, and probably not exactly what you think it's gonna be. As you know, I live with my parents and my dad loves to buy junk and bring it in. My husband loves to eat junk. My daughter loves to eat junk. I love to eat junk. So it's logical that my dad would bring it in. You know, cookies, cakes, donuts, you know, basic crap food. Food that I would probably never buy in my own house. Or if I did, I'd buy it in single serving portions for special occasions or one time sort of things. Or if Mauricio really wanted it, I'd buy it for him and make him take it with him to work. So it wouldn't be in my house. But I frequently find myself doing hand to mouth with these foods, especially when I'm tired. Not always, but sometimes. And the absolute worst is in my office because one, there are about a million people that put that kind of stuff on their desks to share with everybody in the office. It's actually the worst office I've ever been in for that. Um, yeah, everybody brings, ba brings baked goods to work. I don't get it. But even on top of that, like I have a boss whose wife should own a bakery. She is the best baker I think I've ever encountered. And everything she makes is amazing. And she makes stuff for the office at least once a week. So goal number three would be to be able to say no to these things without any FOMO. And goal number four is actually already pretty much taken care of. And that's to join Elizabeth Benton's Fat Loss Fast Track. I have already registered to do that. And I'm super, super, super pumped to start it, you have no idea. I am nervous and excited and I think I'm gonna do really well and I really can't wait to get started. So I'm gonna probably do a whole video on that when it first starts um, to talk about her fat loss fast track because I can't even tell you how much I think this is gonna change my life. So woo woo, one goal already able to be checked off and achieved. And goal number five is gonna to be to actually do a monthly report. I had planned on starting a monthly report video for our finances and I thought, hey, why not do a monthly report for my health goals, my weight loss goals, whatever you wanna call them, um, to let you know where I am. And so, you know, you can tell me what you're doing and I'll tell you what I'm doing and we can support each other because it's gonna be hard. Plus it keeps me like super accountable because if I have to admit to y'all that I ate cookies every night after dinner, I'm probably not going to do it just because of embarrassment sake. I might do it every once in a while and I'll certainly admit those times, but you know, every night. Mm -mm. So as you can see, I've kind of set my goals really pretty high. I'm going to be confronting two major food issues that I've had pretty much my entire adult life. I only plan on taking it in baby steps because that's the way I'm gonna change my behavior is by doing everything slow and steady because slow and steady always wins the race. So rather than having a goal of my weight, I'm gonna make the goal about feeling better, about doing things better, having better energy, making better choices and not worry so much about how much weight I lose. And I have a feeling if I start doing that, the weight will actually come off on its own. So guys, I'm wondering what you think of my goals. Are they reasonable? Are they too high? Um, I'd love to hear what you think, but please be nice about it because this is my life. Don't be mean. I'll cry. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. See ya!